Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Great. It's a pleasure to be with you all. I just uh, spent some time developing this presentation. I think this is going to be a bit like speed dating because I have a bit of time to tell you about me and what I'm passionate about. And then you're going to see if you want to stay in contact with me. <laughs> all right. So um, I wear a couple hats in my life. One hat is in academia. One hat is in private practice, and then I have the opportunity to work with Jenny on 3D Heels. So I love spending time with students because they don't come with the baggage of the past, they come with the opportunities of the future. And I love spending time with my patients. Here's my patient, John Marshall. He played for the SF Seals, the team that predated the Giants. Uh, Joe DiMaggio also played for the SF Seals. And Mr. Marshall right now, who's in his 90s, predated Joe DiMaggio on his team. So, uh, but, regard but regardless of my work and my patience, what I'm the most known for is how I play with dentistry. I recently had a video uh, hit a million views on Instagram and Facebook. Despite all of that, my goal is the same for all of my patients. And not just my patients, but for everyone. My goal is to have everyone bite into an apple and beyond at 100 years old. That's the goal, right? Um, let's see here. Do you eat apples? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Reese is 92 and eats apples. There we go. <laughs> right? Uh, that's Mr. Reese, right? I maintain a mobile clinic where I go also, I expand one of my offices into skilled nursing facilities. So when individuals in their advanced age can't come and see me in my office, we take the team to them. All right, that helps me understand some of the other com complicating factors of delivering dentistry in multiple modes. You know, the goal is to take an individual through their whole life and through preventative means and get them to that goal of biting into an apple at 100 years old. But unfortunately for many people, Due to illness or tragedy, they fall off that path. And then it's our job to reconstruct them. To reconstruct them emotionally, biologically, and physically. You know, dentistry today is far more complex than it ever has been. Dentists, in addition to our own canons of literature, we borrow techniques from civil engineering to build the design for our bridges. We borrow technique, we borrow materials or share materials with aerospace to build our prosthetics. We borrow techniques from, or, from orthopedic surgeons, from plastic surgeons, you name it. And that's, I think, what makes it so much fun. Let's see here. Nope. You gotta love technology, right? So my world is a world of surgery. Oh, why did I do that? That's not fun. Um, so my world is a world of surgery. Oh, come on, work with me. My world <laughs> is a world of surgery that involves the gum and bones, and then it's a prosthetic world that is the teeth that give function. Really? Okay. You get the point. Um, so this is, this is what we call an all-on-four placement when we need to reconstruct someone's full arch of their mouth. Let's see here. Now let's move on. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta love these tech gambits, right? It, they always, you design them, you, you're proud of them, and then they work so well, right? Um, so on top of all of that, our industry is, is undergoing a massive shift. Essentially, what cell phones did to landlines is what our 3D technologies is doing to dentistry. And I'm gonna take you along that journey today, right? That journey, I'll walk you through, and I'm gonna start on a sentimental note in 1970. This is myself as a student with senior Dr. Kaji. And I should, he, you know, it's, it's an honor to be here at the German American um, Business Association gathering because my, my father in 1970 was an exchange student in Hamburg. And that year was a year of many firsts for him because as a colored man growing up in apartheid South Africa, that was his first trip on an airplane. And that was his first trip where he was legally allowed to touch a white patient. <laughs> because in apartheid South Africa, as a medical student, he wasn't even allowed to touch white cadavers. 
right? We'll, we'll fast forward from there. In 1980 was the birth of CAD CAM in dentistry. That was the year at the University of Zurich, the CERAC system was developed. And for those of you who have seen CERAC, it's an application where we can scan teeth, we can design them, and we can mill them. So this is scanning, designing, and that's a, a design tooth that's placed on someone, mill it. It's not just Sarah that's changing it. That's that's a bit of a stretch, but um, you know, I, people people like to postulate. This is a case that I've done using Sarah technology, where in the patient's posterior arch, I built her on implants, and then I'm finishing her case with the front, thus completing her full arch. So this case was fully digitally designed, milled, right, and baked, and, uh, and then delivered to the patient. This is Sadie. She's marrying an awesome guy named Alan next year, and uh, I can't wait to go to her wedding. Um, so where are we with CERAC? A CERAC restoration of tooth is placed every five seconds in the world. 200,000 dentists and only 75% of the market share after almost 40 years. Why? Closed system, too expensive. They price themselves out of the market. Right, let's fast forward. An application many of you know of, Invisalign. Um, Invisalign, uh, developed by two business students at Stanford, Zia Chisti and Kelsey Worth, they postulated that you could move teeth using retainers. Orthodontists didn't believe it and said, no, you can't. It was the former dean at University of the Pacific that opened the doors to allow them to test it on patients. And that's an example of what we can do in the future. This is Invisalign. Invisalign uses a series of custom-made aligners to straighten the tooth. It's easy. Every two weeks, you'll pop in a new set of aligners that will gradually transform your smile. Throughout your treatment, the aligners will gently move your teeth into place without any wires or brackets. Plus, because Invisalign is clear and removable, you can begin to see results in a matter of months. Pretty cool stuff. And the numbers are staggering. This was the first mass-market 3D printing application. And it just went to show that mass market 3D printing is, is there for dentistry. 149 million unique 3D printed models developed in the last 17 years. Let's go to 2012. I, I thought this was pretty cool except my mouse on the screen. Um, 3D printed jaw implanted in Belgium. 83 year old lady lost her jaw due to a severe infection, had to be resected. A 3D printed jaw optimized the surgery and they were able to implant it and she's still functioning until I think she passed away recently. Um, anyway, what's really cool and what I'm excited about is earlier this year the FDA had a clearance for the first implantable 3D printed titanium. What does that mean for me as an implant guy? I no longer in the future would have to stock 40 types of implants in my office of different, of different sizes and maintain that inventory. I might just be able to print it in my office when the patient needs it. Let's fast forward. 2016, very cool year for dentistry because this 23 year old design student changed the game. For $60, he printed his own clear aligners. I think the individuals at Invisalign were a little shaking when they saw this, <laughs> right? 3D printing sales to the dental industry started to skyrocket. And when you say why, I think what's cool is we started moving from closed systems, from sending your case to Invisalign, having them design everything for you, shipping the trays and destroying the rest of the case. So you can't revisit your case. You have to start all over. Sarah, closed system, they sell you the scanner, they mill it, right? Their software, you can't interchange parts. So the cost be maintained high. We're now entering a, a, a we're now entering an era of open systems. Surgical guiding for implant is uh, where, when you place implants, it's nice to know where you're gonna place them. So these allow you to do that. And before, this was a costly process. You'd have to scan the patient, you have to send it to a lab, they'd have to design where to put in, they'd have to de decide where to put in the implant. And now Blue Sky Bio, this 
this this dentist operated company decided to release their planning software for free decided to interact it with any 3d printer so now the cost for someone like me to surgically and precisionally place an implant went from $150 to about $12 to $15, right? Pretty cool. Next technology, Invisalign. They used to, you have to send them all the information. Companies like Orchestrate just developed a system where you can design your own case and 3D print these cases in your office. So why wouldn't you, right? All right, 2017, very cool. Huffington Post released an article where they said the dental industry, you know, we have $4 billion worth of products, prosthetics, in the dental industry that are developed every year that can technically be 3D printed. Right, the technology is just expanding rapidly. This is what I'm currently saving my lunch money for. So this process, to get all of you guys that have had goop put in your mouth at some point, to take an accurate impression normally costs about $30, seven minutes of chair time, your time and your assistant's time. With this scanner, he just did it in 11 seconds, right? More accurate, interfacing with any software, with any Miller, right? That's where we're going. So if any, any of you guys want to contribute to my lunch fund, you know, that, right? we can now print more things than ever before. So Michael Scherer, great guy, he'll be one of our speakers at next year's 3D Hills conference. In dentistry right now, digital technology is really, it's like gone to the days of the old fashioned, like gooey, messy impression. Having a 3D printer in my practice has literally changed everything I do. I can do a host of different things with it, including making my own bleaching tray, uh, bite guards, or even surgical guides. What I do is, is I scan a patient. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. We've moved from 1980, the ability to design and print a single tooth, to now being able to print full arch prosthetics. I'll kind of fast forward through this. I used to I used to DJ a little bit in high school, so this is a really cool track. So I won't cut it off before the beat drops. Okay? So what I really like about this, and if you can geek out with me, this is gonna calculate right now the perfect position for the teeth to come together so the forces are perfectly equalized. Right there in the green. You'll see this. Look at that. The math behind that, I mean, I, I can't even count, so it's like, you know, <laughs> just amazing. Okay, we'll, we'll let the beat drop. There we go. Sorry it's not loud enough. All right. Um, moving from the prosthetic side to the surgical side, this is where a bit of my research came in. As a student, I was interested in how do we regenerate teeth? Right? When we do root canals, why do we kill teeth? Why can't we regrow this tissue inside? So th that led me on a journey um, working in an angiogenesis lab and eventually working with a material called platelet-rich fibrin in practice. So this is something when I have a surgical case, I draw the patient's blood, I spin it at a specific value so I can save the, the, um, the growth factors, white blood cells in a fibrin mesh, and then I implant that in my surgeries. So uh, this is my uh, Dr. Chokin in the middle. He brought uh, platelet-rich fibrin into dentistry, and it was an awesome. To, it was awesome to meet him earlier this year. This is a case. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys. Someone needed wisdom teeth taken out. So this is the product from the blood on a suture string, dropped straight into the wisdom tooth site. Right? I've had, <laughs> I've had, I, I've had patients walk away taking, needing no pain medications because I established healing right away. I established the blood vessel flow and all the nutrients are right where it needs it. So we skip proliferation of blood vessels, we skip inflammation, 
right? And we go straight to the remodeling of tissue. It's pretty amazing. Our speaker, Nahid Mohammed, who was at our last 3D Heels conference, right there in the middle, and there's yours truly on the left, he, he just took it a step further. He 3D printed a bone graft that would go into the defect you see on the right, and he was able to embed it using PRF, right? So it would have, it would have the uptake. That's 2017, so where are we, right? Is the future here yet? You know, like, here, my watch is telling me, like, now's a good time to, like, step forward, right? I see the future as a role, as a stepping, as, I see the future of a designer dentist. So in dental school, you're, you're taught to consult, you're taught to collect data on your patients, and you're trained to do procedures, right? This whole field of designing your patient's case, milling it and fabricating it, I think in some ways it's gonna push us into the future, but actually take us to our roots as dentists. So where are we? 200,000 dentists in the US, all working out of little cottages, right? It's gonna be a challenge moving this technology forward. You know, but there's a lot of things working in our favor to get there. And one thing I think is forming the learning communities that's gonna do it for us. So I invite you all, not just to join us at 3D Heels for the dental section, but for all of it. It's gonna be next year here in April. And, you know, let's just, let's just go back to the basics. What's the goal? You know, it's using this technology so all of us, right, can bite into an apple at 100 years old. So, so and, you know, I just, sorry I've gone over my time. I, I, I'm sure I have. Um, you know, and, and, and I think what's gonna take us there is being able to ask those big questions, right? You know, if, if Henry Ford asked, said, if I asked people what they would have wanted, they would have said faster horses, and he gave them a car. And I think that's what this technology that we have today can do. So, um, so the speed dating is over. You know, it, it, here's my Tinder profile, just kidding. Um, if you want to stay in contact, I'd love to.